Hi, I'm Trevor Haskett. I'm a Senior Technical Director at Motioneering. And uh, I'm going to speak a little bit about dampers and damping and motion control in structures. Structures move. Structures move under the influence of wind, under pedestrian loading, uh, under seismic action. And it's only a problem when it interferes with the activity that that structure was designed for. But occasionally they do. And as we build more daring structures, use more aggressive construction techniques and higher tech materials, uh, we're finding that they tend to move more and this does begin to impact on our intended use of those structures. So the types of structures that might move too much as designs evolve are perhaps cellular communication towers, uh, bridges, floors and shopping centers, even office floors. Uh, High-rise buildings have been, a, I think, a market that draws a lot of the public's attention because, you know, tall towers are very interesting. Tall towers also tend to move around in the wind. So historically, in order to control these motions, uh, structural engineers would access either more stiffness, like more of the structural materials they're building the structure from, or more mass. And as you make something you know, heavier and heavier, it just tends to react less to the loads that are being placed on it. What's missed there is there's another property called damping. And damping is another, it's really low-hanging fruit. We can augment the damping of the performance of the structure, uh, usually with very modest costs and dramatically improve its performance. So I'll make a distinction between what we call inherent damping, which is damping that's intrinsic to the properties of the structure and supplemental damping, which is the damping that as engineers we can add to the structure. So the only thing that really limits the amplitude that a structure moves conventionally is its inherent damping. And this is, this is the damping, this is where energy goes. So after the wind or the pedestrian pushes on the structure and it moves around, that energy eventually winds up as heat. And it winds up as heat because you know, you've got beams and columns and little microscopic motions cause frictions. Uh, we call that hysteretic damping. Or perhaps uh, the drywall partitions, uh, they rub against the ceilings as the structure shears back and forth. This is where the energy goes. That's intrinsic damping, inherent damping. And it's not really part of the design. Uh, you, it's accidental. It's just there as a consequence of the materials that we want to use for strength. Supplemental damping then are additional systems that we can intentionally design into the structure uh, to much more efficiently uh, extract that motion, that energy, out of the building and ultimately dissipate it as heat. So there are a variety of damping systems that are finding common use in high-rise buildings or long-span bridges. Uh, we generally call them uh, tuned dampers. They're in a family of dampers that they have some properties. They have, they have an amount of mass. It's perhaps one or two percent of the structural mass. They, um, they have a natural frequency just like the structure has and then they also have a designed amount of damping within themselves. So by adding these tuned dampers to a structure, we can uh, capture some of that motion, dissipate that energy. So we can have solid heavy objects like tuned mass dampers. Uh, these would be big boxes, big structure, um, structural steel boxes full of ballast that move around in the structure. That's a tuned mass damper, but we can also use a liquid. Uh, water is really affordable. Uh, you pump it up the top of the building into the proper sized container and uh, its natural physical wave action will oscillate around inside the building as well, or inside the tank that you've designed for it. And then inside that tank we put some devices that just are designed to dissipate the right amount of energy through turbulence of that water swirling past either screens or paddles. Uh, it's important to get just the right amount, not too much, not too little. So damping systems really are an enabling technology. We say that because with the daring heights that buildings are going to these days, they're just not economical to add enough steel, add enough concrete to make them, to control their movement to a point where occupant comfort is not impacted in a strong wind event. Uh, there are other benefits to uh, controlling elevator cable sway or maybe perhaps creaking and groaning in the structure. So, when the traditional approaches of adding more mass or adding more structural materials are just prohibitively expensive, or perhaps it's just not even feasible, 
uh, this is where we go to the damping system. And by engineering one of these systems into the structure, it really does enable this more aggressive architecture. In our next chapter, we'll discuss more of the details about how tuned damping systems work, give you some insight into how much space they require, or how heavy they might be, and really what makes them work. I'm Trevor Haskett, Senior Technical Director at Motion Ring, and I'm looking forward to speaking with you about your project.